Three Possibilities Why We Haven't Seen Any Aliens The universe is so vast and infinite that it is impossible to know all about it. It's full of beautiful places and never ceases to amaze us. But besides this beauty, there can be something scary also out there or maybe not. Arthur Clarke said we are either alone in this universe or we are not. And both these thoughts are equally scary. Can it be that we are alone in this universe? Or if we aren't, where are all the aliens? Our universe is so vast, but we still haven't found any trace of life on another planet or even traces of microbial life. In this universe, we have a lot of galaxies very similar to the Milky Way, and they might even have a solar system similar to ours. And some of these stars might have planets like our Earth, just like Kepler 432b which is very similar to Earth and even has water. On February 22, 2017, NASA announced the discovery of the most Earth-sized planets found in the habitable zone of a single star called TRAPPIST-1. This system of seven rocky worlds, all of them with the potential for water on their surface, is an exciting discovery in the search for life on other worlds. There is the possibility that future studies of this unique planetary system could reveal conditions suitable for life. But why haven't we seen any aliens yet? Will we be able to make contact with them, or are we just alone in the universe? Some places in the universe might have intelligent life because the universe is very old, and many stars and planets have been formed before humans came into existence. If any civilization existed in this old universe, they might have had a lot of time to advance themselves. Our Milky Way is about 13 billion years old. Initially, it was not suitable for habitation, but after 2 to 3 billion years, conditions were hospitable for civilizations to exist. Our planet is about 4.54 billion years old, and many civilizations could have existed before us. Based on the Kardashev scale, civilizations are of three types. A Type 1 civilization is the one that has used all the resources of its planet. We are currently 0.75 on that scale. A Type 2 civilization is one that has used all the energy of its host star, like the concept of a Dyson Sphere. A Type 3 civilization is one that has colonized and used all the natural resources of its galaxy and will be godlike to us. So if that's the case, and leaving out the possibility that we are not alone, because that would mean we are special, where are all the aliens? Why haven't we met or seen any trace of aliens? Where is everybody? Welcome to the Fermi Paradox. No one has answers to this. All we have are theories, and in this video we are going to share with you some of these possible answers to the Fermi Paradox. Let's discuss some of them. Search for Extraterrestrial Life or SETI is an organization dedicated to finding evidence of life in other places of our universe. But SETI has always been underfunded and looked down upon by the world. Earlier, it was established like an organization like NASA until Congress cut down its funding, and now it mainly relies on donations. Another organization, METI, is a fairly new project which is known as Messaging Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Its main objective is to send messages to extraterrestrial beings and try to make contact with them. It creates and transmits interstellar messages in order to attempt communication with extraterrestrial civilizations. Many targets nearby star systems and also rethinks the nature of the messages to send. Although the scientists at SETI and METI have had little resources to observe outer space, and that's true, in our Milky Way, which is very vast, SETI has only observed about a fraction of the entire galaxy. So we have observed little of the universe and our galaxy. It's just like going to a beach and taking water in your bucket and saying that there are no sharks in the ocean because there are no sharks in my bucket. We have sampled little of the universe. We all know life has occurred in extreme and harsh environments, which is evident from life on Earth and can evolve under those conditions. The universe is vast enough with trillions and trillions of planets, so it is possible that life could occur anywhere. It's just that we haven't observed it. Another idea is that there is a godlike and very advanced Type 3 civilization out there that monitors the galaxy and once any civilization reaches a certain level of intelligence, it destroys it. It is possible that they might have passed all kinds of hindrances 
that occur for life to exist and now are at a very advanced state of intelligence. It could be that they might have gotten bored and created us to observe us in their leisure time. To prevent competition in the future when we start to advance ourselves into a higher civilization, they might contact us and kill us. We could be just like viruses that start and spread. We might be in a tightly regulated galaxy and they treat our Earth like part of a vast and protected national park. We know this as the zoo hypothesis. It might be that they are just watching us like we watch animals in a zoo. The zoo part has a certain significance to it. Today, the animal zoos have to keep animals caged so that we can observe them and, more importantly, go on a summer evening and just watch them with some snacks. What if we are the same animals for a godlike alien civilization? The thought itself is terrifying for a lot of people. So if we were living in a galactic zoo, it would be pretty much quiet. It would be something like going out and observing animals in a zoo. Just like in a zoo, we observe zebras and then move on to the other animals. The animals talk or communicate among themselves and we just see and enjoy them doing their own animal stuff. The aliens in the same way might be observing us doing our weird human things that we do. But what if we could tweak this scenario a little bit to actually establish interspecies communication? That's the main purpose of SETI and a new project called METI, Messaging Extraterrestrial Intelligence, where they actively send messages of their own trying to make contact. The other question would be, who are the zookeepers? This idea and thought itself is scary. We have seen and read a lot of sci-fi movies and novels which show that we live in a simulation, or we are some kind of experiment not knowingly and there is someone watching and observing us. Another idea is that there might be scary predator civilizations out there and we are smart enough not to broadcast their location and remain discreet. This would mean that we are fools in fact and cannot see them because they don't want us to. This also explains why we have found no signals in SETI. Because as Stephen Hawking said, if they visit us, the outcome would be the same as when Columbus landed in America, which didn't turn out well for the Native Americans. It's certainly not going to be a friendly neighbor conversation. There are other reasons advanced aliens may keep their heads down. Self-preservation springs to mind. What if they're trying to avoid being destroyed or enslaved? Well, this seems legit because it's the nature of evolution that we try to protect our kind. Like a squirrel will protect a squirrel and a parent protects its child. Because they want their family tree to go on, and that's why they are discreet. But if they come into contact with us to prevent their civilization, they might destroy us, seeing us as a threat. One last convincing idea is that we might be completely alone in this entire universe. This thought is scary. What if we are all that matters? What's so special about us that we are the only life in the universe? And we, the only ones looking out in a hope to find life? Do we have to share this with anyone else? And if that's the case, we have to prevent life in this universe and it's our responsibility to sustain and maintain life. We would have to become the first type 3 civilization in this universe and advance ourselves. Though humans have always considered themselves as special, this idea is disturbing. We may be completely alone in this dark, empty space. This might give existential crisis to a lot of folks, but the odds of this happening are very, very low. So what do you think about the Fermi Paradox? Are we alone or is there someone waiting for us? Is someone out there watching us? Let us know what you think in the comment section below and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel and press the bell notification to remain notified of more amazing videos like this. Thanks.